Maddie Loves Podcast. Maddie Loves Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Maddie Loves Podcast. I'm your host, Matt D. Simone, and with me this week, as always, is Dr. Tom Lucas. Hey, everybody. Um, and also joining us is a very special guest, uh, Dr. Josh Begley. Hey, happy to be here. Josh, man, we're really glad you could come out. Thank you. Josh is uh, a buddy of ours, a big fan of the comics, uh, and many other things that we uh, talk about often here on the podcast. Uh, this week's episode in particular, um, we're, we've entered the month of October, so we are going to be maybe priming you, I guess, a little bit for the Halloween season. It's a fun month. Uh, everybody should be having fun because this is one of the best times of the season is or of the year as far as seasons go, weather. Yeah, and, and I, I do want to interject before we really get into it. My jokey nickname is Dr. Tom, but that's like a, a street doctor of geekdom. <laughs> Dr. Josh Bagley is an honest to goodness Yes, a freaking doctor. doctor. That's yes. right. That's right. Dang it. So yeah. I, I feel that th- that kind of effort and accomplishment <laughs> should be, you know, differentiated from the, the fun stuff. Well, Tom. Well, thank you. Y- y- the fun stuff matters, too. Yes, <laughs> I know, but you um, did the work, man. The, uh, that description of how you're a doctor needs to go on like your business card <laughs> description when we have business cards or whatever that would be uh tremendous i uh, will keep that one in mind um but uh yeah so um you know often over the course of this past year especially i've uh talked with these guys about comic books and uh many uh of our other uh, favorite aspects of geekdom and so i thought going into october why not start bringing more of the uh hall of heroes into the fold here and so uh we're gonna kick off october and talk a little about uh you know how awesome the halloween season is and 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 doing so uh tom and i we watch netflix josh josh you watch netflix yeah i watch netflix right okay so uh we all like to uh randomly just jump on netflix and uh see see what the hell they have going on there um and uh this is the part of the podcast that we like to refer to as that random shit on Netflix. <laughs> Just got home. I need to get my fix. Let's find out what type of shit that they got on Netflix. Oh, come on, baby. The shit that's on Netflix for me. And you, baby. All right, so um, this is kind of an in unison discussion here. Yeah, we we have one specific Netflix pick. Oh yeah, that is um, critical, I think, to life experience, and is something that everyone should maybe legally be mandated to see if they have not. Oh, already. I would agree with that completely. It is just it's essential viewing. Yeah, uh, we are talking about uh, the. Uh, Man, I should have uh, came a little more prepared as far as the year goes. I think it was 87, 87 that this yeah. film was released, but we're talking about none other than uh, The Monster Squad. Woohoo! Uh, yeah. Written by the genius Shane Black. Um, and this is, I think, one of his first uh, notable films that he wrote. I believe it's his greatest contribution to the human condition. Oh, absolutely. Well, that and the character he played in Predator. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, it's a good film, yeah, it but, good film, it's but it's, I mean, it's, has it contributed to culture in a yeah. way that... Sure. Did he give us immortal lines like Wolfman's Gotten Art? I think. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I mean, that and then, then then just... Oh, yeah, like... Although I would pay money for Robert Downey Jr. to say that. <laughs> I Yes, and my on my voicemail. <laughs> Tom, Tom's not here right now. Leave a message after the beep. Wolfman's got nards. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> oh man, it's just uh, this movie. At the end of the day, the overall plot of the Monster Squad is absolutely ridiculous. But if I'm selling this movie to you and it's 1987, I'm going to tell you it's Halloween, 
and it's the Goonies. Yes, yeah, Goonies Halloween style. Yeah, with Goon- more cursing. Right, with more <laughs> yeah. cursing and, yes. and the Universal Monsters. Goonies yeah. a couple grades older. Right. Yeah. But yeah. no, these actually, these kids I think are supposed to be younger than the Goonies. Okay. Um, oh, really? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, because they kill it right away when they... Uh, Stan leave. Winston. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, you know if, they're, if, the, if, the, if the monsters are designed by Stan Winston, Winston it's solid. But the kids in the beginning, they like pan into a, a elementary school, and I was like, "What?" Hmm. You know, it'd probably make more sense if it said like middle school. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Or what we had in Michigan were was junior junior high. high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember junior. High. I experienced one year of junior high school. I went seventh grade junior high, then the next year they switched to middle school, so I went from youngest to oldest uh, okay. in just a year. So that was kind of nice. I only had two years of uh, the junior high slash middle school. This part right here is great. When Dracula first shows up, it's like his clothes are already on him. Yeah. You know, it's magic. Yeah. I, I always thought yeah. it's the amulet around his neck is what does it. But. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's I think, no different than the, how the Flash puts on his suit. You know, the old school right. packed yeah. in his ring. Yeah. Sure. Like, who pack, Who can pack a costume in a ring? Come yeah. On, the suit. Flash. Right, right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only the Flash. And then, I don't know, it's like getting tooth paste back in the in the tube i don't know how you pack the the ring back up i don't either i think he doesn't i think he just has a drawer full of rings like well, this one's spent <laughs> right yeah just, <laughs> just a big old case of them um yeah the monster squad is a film that um if you missed it if for whatever reason it was not on your radar at the time like me i was probably 16 when this film came out okay and I was not going to a lot of movies at sixteen. I right. was working in a pizzeria and trying to, I was trying to go on dates and I things was about like to say, that. Girls, yeah. girls, girls, man. But I came upon it a little bit later. Whereas Goonies, I I saw that in the theater. Mm-hmm. I was the appropriate age for it, you know. And it really, you know, changed my life. It's like one of those really huge, huge. Filmic moments. Absolutely. Well, did you see Monster Squad in the well, theater? I, no, I was. Um, I was actually the perfect age. This is more or less my Goonies kind of because Goonies yeah. came out, I guess, like three years before this, yeah. two years before it, or something like that. And um, and you know, first off, I wasn't allowed to see this movie, so that was the key really? selling point. Why? Oh wow. Um, I mean, what this mo- movie came out when I was like six, seven years old. Okay. So uh, I would have been one of the younger members of the Monster Squad per se, mm-hmm. but I, I think that I mummies in your closet. Did they did they <laughs> get the lowdown that there was like swearing and stuff? Maybe or maybe it might have just been like right from the jump watching this movie. You know, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh man, I probably shouldn't be watching this. You know, <laughs> but that was just how I was as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched it anyway. But one thing that I can tell you that a lot of uh, you know, uh, males my age, uh, you know, in their in their early thirties to mid thirties or whatever, they all saw this movie and immediately started a monster squad. Yeah, like we started a monster <laughs> squad. It was an, it immediately. It was like, oh, we have got to do that. Yeah, but yeah. we're gonna combine it with ninjas. Yeah, okay. we're gonna do a monster <laughs> ninja squad. Oh, nice. Like, unstoppable. Yeah, you know. So were you ninjas fighting monsters or fighting monster ninjas? We were ninjas fighting monsters. Okay, ninjas yeah. hunting monsters. Okay. We would dig ditches in the, this field behind uh, our neighborhood uh-huh. that would be like, you know, about three feet deep. Uh, initially, we, we were trying to like see how far into the earth we could okay, dig, sure. you know, but yeah. gravity starts to take effect. And, yeah. And we realized it was it was uh, tough, so they they made for good uh, quote unquote uh, animal traps. No, oh, yeah, um, but uh, for sure, you know, I if if I had been with you guys at that time at that age when uh when I was in grade school, which would be the age of the Monster Squad kids here, we were really obsessed with um, uh, the Universal monsters and makeup. Yeah, and I remember having several makeup kits, and we would try to do Frankenstein yeah. and Dracula, right. and then we'd make makeshift haunted houses, like in the middle of June. Like yeah. we didn't care, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I've asked people that are of the younger set, like say the millennials and things like that, because based on how culture has changed, 
I really feel like Halloween isn't quite the same as it used to be. It's not. It's no, right. absolutely not. It okay. was so good. Yeah. I loved like, it. To follow through on this, when I was uh, a single digit kid to like maybe 10 or 11, which was kind of the cap for going out to trick or treating, it's it like started, sixth grade. It started to get yeah. a little awkward. Yeah. Every house on every block participated. Yes. And. I would come back. I would use a pillowcase. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I would come back loaded with like my body weight. Right. And, candy. and we would and be none out. None of that fun size crap. No. It was regular size. It was size. full size. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the worst you would get was a popcorn ball or an apple. An apple. Or a toothbrush. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it would happen. And then, you know, I'd get home. My mom would let me stay out really late, which was probably like 9 30. Uh huh. You know, and I would come home. There would be something really cool on TV, you know, some kind of horror movie or whatever. That would be playing, and we'd spread out all the candy, and my mom would do the um, the candy check. Right. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. which really was, what do I want? Yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah, let me check for razor blades and your Twix and right. your Kit Kat. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't think that, like, you know, I hand out candy every year. And I have been, and I would say like fifteen percent of the houses on my street even bother. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really sad. You know, I don't know if it's it's Florida, my neighborhood, t the fact that it's twenty fifteen. But what was Halloween like for you growing up? Well, for me, it was a lot like watching the Monster Squad. You know, it was it was kind of the similar thing. It was like everybody was involved. Once October came around, you know, you're figuring out, okay, well, obviously in the neighborhood we're going trick-or-treating, but, you know, what other Halloween parties are going on? You know, if I had friends that, like, their church had a Halloween party, right. oh, for sure, I'm going. That's candy, you right. know? Uh, uh, but also, too, um, I, I, when you were talking about the neighborhood and we were talking about, like, the big, uh, the big full-size candy bars, yeah. it was always awesome, too, like, for me, for the kids that had someone in their neighborhood that worked for either Coke or Pepsi. Oh, wow. And the person that worked for Coke in my neighborhood was a perfect halfway point. Okay. So we would walk all the way down and get to that house and ice cold coke. Oh, oh perfect. That's you know, nice. Oh, like that like we nice. don't even that's need more nice. caffeine or whatever, you know. Uh -huh. So so that was really that was really cool and it was it was weird because my neighborhood I would trick or treat on my block and then the block the next block over and that was it. Uh and, and when I was growing up. Then other neighborhood like a uh uh, uh Subdivision got built behind my uh -huh. road, but that was well after I'd stopped uh, trick or treating. And then I would go to my grandmother's house, my mom's mom, and we would go over there and, and trick or treat in that neighborhood. And sometimes we'd go a little further out. Mm. But I knew a lot of kids that their parents would drive them and a car full of their friends and just like drop them off right. and let them yeah. go. And back then, you could totally do that. Oh, yes. Yeah, you I mean, could. If you're watching Monster Squad right now, and the the what's her name uh uh Phoebe the yeah, little Phoebe, girl Phoebe. she's in the beginning introduced just walking through the neighborhood all by yeah, herself yeah and she's like right. five yeah you know okay but, but still I mean it was it was there's just something I don't know what happened because no one trick or treats anymore right well yeah. you know and the other thing is too this is really kind of gruesome or whatever and my mother always cringes when I mention it but uh in the mid seventies. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe mid-late 70s, in Detroit, there was a guy that was strangling children. He was abducting and strangling oh. children. The Oakland County child killer. Oh, and he man. had killed a couple of kids. And he was on the loose one Halloween, oh. he, one year. He was out there. My mother said, you're going out with your friends? Bye, have fun, you know? <laughs> and... Uh, we being the sick little kids we were, we would like look for vans. We'd oh be like, there's the van, God. there's the van, yeah. there's the van, almost like mocking it. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, <laughs> we would, we went under, went out under all conditions and there was no um, worry. No. I, I, my, my mother knew I was a smart kid. We've talked about the child killer thing since. And she's like, I never should have let you right. out the door that year. Yeah. Yeah. And all I can say is, Ma. Nothing happened. Right. So why re why feel bad about it? Yeah, sure. exactly. Like I was talking this far less extreme situation, but I uh -huh. was talking with Matt before the podcast about just all the stuff that I got to watch when I was a kid. Like 
you know, back in the days of the disc player, and I would get Beastmaster and Conan the Barbarian. I'm like five years old. <laughs> I saw Heavy Metal when I was nine, and I watched it with my dad, which is really messed up. Now. Right. But, uh, they were there's just this they just this let the world happen man they, and they just guided you yeah you they know? guided you they yeah. you know they protected you to an extent but they're also like our job as parents is to kind of slowly introduce you to the world right as and, opposed to letting you find it out on your own yeah. i have an english friend who uh there's a term called hedge porn and I don't know if we've mentioned this on the show before. <laughs> I don't know. I don't um, think hedge, you have. Hedge porn is <laughs> when you find a dirty magazine, like behind oh, a hedge yeah. or in a garage, oh, or so God. the neighborhood kid has a stash, you yeah. know. And of course, the <laughs> internet has ruined this sort of concept. But when we were kids, you know, there's two ways you're going to, you know, mm -hmm. I, the internet wasn't available. So you're either going to learn about stuff from older kids down the street. Or you're going to learn about your parents. There's no internet where you can stumble upon all kinds of awfulness. Right. Uh, no, yeah. no, you had to so, work to find You it. needed gatekeepers. <laughs> Older brothers. For it. Yeah. So my mother took me to movies that were probably technically inappropriate. Right. Um, but I'd like to think I turned out okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, some people may argue that. I think but. it's when you show the don't do that, don't do that, don't do that on oh. a daily basis. Yeah. That's what drives the kids to do it, you sure. know? Oh, yeah. Um, but also, it's how you deliver the don't do that, too, you know? And my parents were always just very, like, you know, don't do that. Right. You yeah. know, and, yeah, and I, it just good. it rang and made sense in my brain. So did they explain it to you? What? Why you shouldn't do whatever it is that you should do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I knew at the at the base of it all, without even knowing what disappointment meant as a kid, mm -hmm. okay. I knew that that would be the result of anything yeah. stupid I did. Right you know? on. So I just yeah. didn't want to disappoint, more or less. Yeah. Nice. Um, you're a good kid, Matt. Well, yeah, Matty, you you're, 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 you're a good kid. <laughs> Josh, um, what was Halloween like where you grew up? Well, um, I grew up in a few different places, but Halloween, like, prime Halloween age. I was living in a suburb in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was just the time period, uh, you know, which would be mid or late 80s, uh -huh. uh, or if it was Houston, which Houston's kind of sort of in the Bible Belt, so I wouldn't think that it would be like a big Halloween stuff, but the neighborhoods went all out. Really? Right? Yeah, and Houston neighborhoods were weird because they, they overdeveloped, and so there were a lot of empty houses and stuff. Oh. So that kind of like made great for exploring when you're a kid. And oh, hearing, man, I will... Uh Abandoned house. Yeah, I know. I'm right? so there. I know, right? I did. I still have a fascination with abandoned buildings, I without a doubt. But um, they did something uh, uh, in my neighborhood where they built an interchange. Um, and so they bought up all the properties along that road, and mm -hmm. those houses were abandoned for like a year. Yeah. So can you imagine what young Josh would have oh, Josh, done? Yeah, I would just bring my comics, I would bring like a snack, and I would spend all day just kind of hanging out. Right. Know? See, y'all were, cool were good kids with the abandoned houses, man. <laughs> I knew some kids that... Uh, you we know. broke some stuff. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. We, yeah. we broke, broke some things. stuff. I yeah. mean, I totally, I, that's I all there is the, to it. I plead the fifth on all that action there. <laughs> I do want to uh, shift gears. I know, Maddie, you're the host, but no, I, no, got, no. I got a burning question I need to get answered from you guys. Yeah, man. What were your favorite Halloween costumes? As a kid, oh. what were what were the best? Like, well, it's you funny know. you mentioned that because <laughs> I, I, I scrapbooking, Maddie. I remember oh I have I have two of my actually three of my favorite costumes here, and all three of these costumes are like from Halloween. I think. Okay, so the the one where I'm dressed up as a ninja here. I don't remember that Halloween at all. I don't. I don't ever remember. Like I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be a ninja. But I. That was my. That was the costume I chose. And Matt, Maddie pulled out a uh, a binder. Yeah. With some kind of scrapbook action going yes, on here. It's, oh, yeah. oh wow. It's, yeah. it's my life up until the age of 18 years old, more or less. My okay. mom put it together for me when I graduated high school. That's oh, nice. That is nice. Yeah, and this is back when people took pictures and printed them out. So this was, yeah, yeah that's the uh, that's the old powder puff football game. Okay, uh, good man. There. Uh, and so what's the other? Great okay, costume? so so there's there's this one right here. I always thought was just very interesting. Yeah. Uh, the. Uh, I don't know what I was trying to do there. Well, Mom obviously was the makeup artist on my Dracula there, but yeah. um, I remember though, 
uh, I was Dracula for a first grade Halloween costume contest. And I remember my mom was so amped up about it. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. like, Matt, you look like a vampire. Yeah. You are going to win. <laughs> yeah. And Did I you? never... No. Oh. I mean, who won? This kid who just had like this like wolf head and a cape, and he just like put it over his head. <laughs> and that was it. He had like regular clothes on underneath uh, and everything. No, it was rigged. It yeah. was rigged, he man. It it's off. a fix. I know. Yeah. And, and like my mom was a teacher at that school. It's bullshit. You yeah. know? I should have won. But yeah, the fix is in, yeah. buddy. Hey, I ended up with best penmanship. So <laughs> there you go. That counts for more. Uh, the, best wolf head. Nerd. So, yeah. Is this you in the production of Waiting okay. for Godot? No, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this was fi- final Halloween for me, actually, mm-hmm. now that okay. I think about it. Uh, you know, Mom, I think, was like, aren't you going to go out? And I was like, no. And she's like, we're going to go over to Granny's, put something on. And I was like, okay. So right I just pulled a bunch of shit together. Okay. But, yeah, so those are a few of my uh, mm-hmm. costumes. My my overall favorite costume was my always my go-to, and that's the Ultimate Warrior. Of course, <laughs> I dress like the Ultimate Warrior about five times every year, so just on my I own. have yet to I, see this. I don't, I don't have any pictures. All right. No. Unfortunately, this is an audio only podcast, or right? I might yeah. ask you to actually yeah. do that for the show. We might have to <laughs> put the warrior paint on. Yeah. And sit here. So, Josh, <laughs> what were your best Halloween outing well, costumes? Um, my mom loved Halloween. She got all into it. And so, the, like, we didn't do store bought, bought costumes. Or okay. Anything, right? She made stuff. Nice. And so, oddly enough, I remember my brother's more than I do mine for some reason. But I remember one year I went as Darth Vader, and it was a kick-ass Darth Hell Vader. Hell yeah. Nice. But my favorite one was Moon Knight. My Holy mom, you shit. You went as Moon Knight? I did. What? I did. Shut the door. I know. She And it was... It was phenomenal. It was, you know, it was great. She made the the black face thing. Are there pictures anywhere of this? I need to find it. I'm gonna, Josh, I'm gonna I need, call my mom. I need this in Holy my life, man. smokes, man. Moon Knight. Like, yeah. who picks that? Weird. Josh Bagley, Doctor Josh Bagley, <laughs> kid version. Right. And how old are you? I was maybe nine, ten. <laughs> Reading Moon Knight, yeah. wanting to be Moon Knight for Halloween. I loved Moon Knight. Like, yeah, I didn't really start reading uh, Moon Knight until I was really old enough to start like understanding comics. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah Moon Knight has a lot of layers. Absolutely. Does, but know. that is just fantastic. You at that age, you yeah. know, being like out of all of the heroes <laughs> <laughs> on right. the damn I know, roster. Right? You picked Moon Knight. I want to yeah. be How Moon many Knight. people did you have to explain who you were? I think so almost like, all. Of them. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. I think most of them are like, "Oh, you're a little gray ghost." And they're like, "No, I'm Moon Knight." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's my, great. My brother um my mom made my brother a Flash costume one year, oh, yeah. and it was amazing. Those, yeah. I do know that there are pictures of those. And then one year he went as Spider-Man, and he had little cans of silly string. Nice. And like in Houston, they went all out in the at least in the suburb. And so like the houses were decorated, and just everybody was giving out candy. They were having so much fun. Right. And like it, it was built up for weeks because everybody's like. Halloween's coming, Halloween's right, coming. Yeah. And there's this one dude who was standing in front of his house, and he's dressed in, I don't know, like, in my mind, he look, kind of looks like Igor, but that just might be my memory playing uh-huh. the fool. But he's stirring this cauldron, and he's like, you know, <laughs> and giving, the, giving the bad look, and Jake starts spraying him with silly string. And oh, then no. this guy was so cool, he was playing around. He started writhing on the ground going, oh, curse you, Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, oh, let's see, that's, that, that made... That must have made it so special it did. for him. It did. Oh, made it nice. for me, special for me, and I was just okay. observing. Right. <laughs> we had the house up the street one year, you know, where, like, they made a bunch of straw men and, like, laid them. Nice. Out. <laughs> yeah. And one yeah. And the guy, that, the dad that lived there was dressed as one of the straw yeah. men. Oh. oh. You know, when nice. you come up to the house and he'd, like, you know, you were like, whoa. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's Beautiful. So no cool. candy for me. I'm, 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 I'm out of here. I'm good. So I had a couple of good ones. Okay. Too. All, All right. right. So when I was five, six, uh, Spider Man was the man. Okay. And my mother made me a Spider Man costume. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she took a blue turtleneck and she cut the red pieces. Right, and then she drew in all the webbing oh, wow. and the logo, and then she cut a red spider out and sewed it to the back of the turtleneck. She went out and got me a red ski mask, and she markered in all the webbing on the ski mask. Wow! And then I wore like blue corduroys, 
and then she got these like oversized socks, mm-hmm. and she just put it straight over the shoes. Socks, yeah, and I pulled them up to like the thigh, and yeah. she did the webbing too. That costume was so rad that I would wear it like any time. Right, oh, that's yeah. where I, I was with Ultimate Warrior, man. Yeah. I'd go in and just grab my mom's like eyeliner yeah. and just start <laughs> just start carving that paint into yeah. my face. Yeah. I totally feel you. Oh yeah. So that was a multi-purpose <laughs> costume for sure by far. Right. Then in. I want to say 78 or 79, I went as a Tuscan Raider. Oh, And wow. I, I went for two years straight. Okay, here's the deal. First of all, my mother made the full uh, kit with uh, burlap. Okay, she mm-hmm. made a burlap vest and a ver- burlap cloak and like a belt for me to tie around wow. and all that stuff. Then my grandfather took an old football helmet and covered it with burlap and built the whole face rig oh, wow. in there and put the horns on it, like carved wood horns. And like, I mean, it was it was some solid, wow. solid shit. You know, yeah. my grandfather was really, really big on building and making stuff. And yeah. He was the kind of guy who would make a kite out of balsa wood twine in a newspaper. Right. Not like, let's go to the store and buy a kite. Yeah. He's like, this is what we did in the Depression, you know? <laughs> right. And he'd like make a kite. And then... Um, you know, I had some other stuff that was pretty cool. I went as like uh, a Templar one year, and I made a helm and all that. But my last year trick or treating, you know, I was like twelve, probably like you know at the end. I didn't even really have a costume, so my friend who was a little younger, uh, his dad got me this bathrobe thing, and he wrapped my head in toilet paper, so I'd look kind of like a mummy mm-hmm. or something. Well, that toilet paper lasted like a block. Sure, right? and I was yeah. like, ah, eh, screw this. So what I did is I went back home, and um, my mom and um, guy she was married to at the time, they were really big on voc- voca- uh, vacation brochures. Mm-hmm. And they had this huge glass bowl of vacation brochures on the coffee table. And they would always just look at it and like think about trips or whatever. All right. <laughs> I took a ton of them, and I went around the neighborhood as a cultist, <laughs> inviting people to our compound. <laughs> How old were you? I was 12. Oh, Holy shit. Awesome. And people would bring me into their house and have me do my spiel for the whole family. <laughs> Shut and up. And I would say, you'll feel much better. And I'd hand them brochures, and I'd say, you mm. know, and like all this stuff. Oh. And because uh, it was the 70s, cults were huge. Oh in the God. 70s and uh, I blew everyone away with this like crazy improv on the spot screw being a mommy I'm gonna be a cultist yes and wow. uh, people were that was a pretty good way to go out I that think you good. know of course I've gone you know to Halloween parties since then and you know various degree right. of costumes but I think at the end of the day none of them have quite had the inventiveness okay halloween party costumes best mm-hmm. one ever what's your best one josh my what's best your one? one indiana jones oh okay oh, oh i right. see that yeah I as got the fedora all right so yeah. you as indiana jones mm-hmm. what are what's a good costume that you've seen someone else like real clever that you've been like wow oh, that's good real clever uh let's see I remember one time my friend John went as a black knight and his girlfriend, who's now his wife, and she was like this princess and you know, she had even the conical hat and dressed all in purple and stuff. And they just, they really went all out. Huh. And, and, you know, it's kind of funny because, like, it, I've been to a lot of conventions and I've seen a lot of cosplaying and stuff like that. Yeah. Cosplaying's huge now, but... It's a, it's it's a, like it's Halloween. A, it's professional. It is yeah. professional, but, like, I I still, like, to this day, I remember that, obviously. Yeah. It was really good. One of the most clever party uh, costumes I saw was Safe Sex, and the couple <laughs> went as safes. They made these big boxes yeah. that they wore, and they, you know, painted them to look like your old classic safe, you know, with the big combination lock, and then they wore bondage gear. They had, like... <laughs> You know, spiky bracelets, and she wore like a little leather mini skirt, and they had all that stuff, and they went to safe sex. I thought that was fairly brilliant. Yeah. I love, I love uh, those types of clever costumes. Uh, and one of my favorite and most lasting costumes, I wasn't even at the party. This is a party that my parents attended when I was a little boy, and I just saw pictures. And I'm going to do this eventually one day when I host a Halloween party of some sort. But a guy dressed as Elvis Mm -hmm. Uh started the night as young Elvis. (laughs) 
But here's the key. He progressively he got transitioned. fatter. But how he did it was even better because, yeah, he'd walk around and you'd see him like progressively getting fatter. But everybody's taking pictures, and in every picture, he's photobombing before photobombing was a thing with like a donut in his mouth. So you watch, Stop you it. watch this guy. Who is this guy? Oh, I was the neighbors of my mom and dad's like best friends growing up. Who um, is this when I was growing I up. Get that guy a trophy. Oh my yeah. gosh, man. Like, that is, it was such a good idea and it's just so funny in all the pictures like he's just leaning in that's amazing with like a donut or uh-huh. something you know so you see he's constantly eating of course my night would definitely end with me just running out in a craze with like a, a revolver you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's going on what's going on man <laughs> shooting out tvs this ain't no good that is fantastic man that is so i don't know you know whenever i go to these cons i always think about Okay, my dream cosplay, mm-hmm. really the only one that I want to do, and uh, it remains basically uh, a wonderful idea. I have not taken any steps to do it. Uh-huh. Is I want to go as a Houston rollerballer <laughs> from the 74, 1974 film Rollerball. Yeah, yeah. I want to go classic James Conn. Yeah. None of that. BS that happened in the early 2000s, right? I want to go with the original Rollerball. Um, It's a throwback. It's a great costume. Mm -hmm. You get to wear roller skates all day. You know, it would be bad. Have you seen the original Rollerball? Remember when I told you that story about Halloween as a kid and I was like, what's the scariest movie? I think I talked about that like the first episode. Okay. I asked my parents what the scariest movie they ever saw was and they told me Halloween. Right. Mm -hmm. Um... Well, my dad, Rollerball was a film that my dad would always, you know, (laughs) tell me about, right? Well, when the Philadelphia Eagles changed their uniforms in, I think, 1996 or 97, Mm -hmm. I think it was 97 or 98, shit, I don't know. Well, they just changed the color scheme, right? Well, no, they changed, like, the logo and everything, the numbers and everything. Really? I did not know that. Oh, my God, yeah. And when they first came out, they were not, like, the dark green that they have now they were more like this like tealish color uh-huh. and when they introduced them they were like you know and here are the eagles new uniforms they look like old they look like you know guys out of a out of a scene from rollerball and i was like dad you wasn't that that movie you told me about from a long time ago and he's like yeah and i watched it and it i was still a little too young to watch that film mm-hmm. i think the end freaked me out yeah. i love that movie yeah, that is, yeah. That is i really movie. really well, that's Megacon, really man. I really love that mm-hmm. movie a whole lot. And, uh, you know, it's one of the few where I have watched it with the full commentary on. Have you? Yeah, That's because awesome. one of the things that, and it's not, I'll get us back to Halloween, but Rollerball, they built the arena, you know? And I had a film teacher say, if you want to see really good sports photography, watch Rollerball, because they played the game while they shot the movie. Okay. Like, it's all athletes and stuntmen and all that, and they skated round and round and round, mm-hmm. and they played this game while they shot the film. Wow, I know okay? that. Yeah. So, as far as sports photography goes, it's some of the most uninterrupted, amazing, real action that's happening on the screen. Okay. The second part is is after the movie wrapped, that arena remained bi- a built set in the studio back lot for about a year and a half. <laughs> and the stuntmen that had been on the film would go back and play their own pickup version <laughs> of Rollerball. Roller ball. That's awesome. Yeah, wow. On the set. Wow. And last but not least, somebody has created a paper craft version called Roller Brawl, which you can download online. I do have the PDFs. One day I'll put it together. But basically, they figured out a miniatures war game version of Rollerball that you can play. That wow. is awesome. With all that. And they even, like, I, there's pictures where, the you know, they built a much nicer, they went beyond the paper craft and built, like, a proper diorama. Mm-hmm. And they went, remember those frustrating electric football yeah, players? Yeah, just didn't right? do anything. They do those and they paint them. <laughs> You know, oh, cool. And they make like a whole kit. Wow. So anyway, That's, that is my ultimate cosplay is roll, Rollerball. That rollerball awesome. screams Netflix. Like, net, I don't know why yeah. that isn't on Netflix. I don't either. I think it may have been. And then it, oh, okay. It, you Phased know, some things come and go and then some things 
seem to be eternal yeah. to Netflix. So anyway, transition us, Matt. Well, what's up? Uh, you know, there for a second, I wanted to. I, we were talking about trick or treating there for a second, and and it, we didn't really get around to coming up with why nobody trick or treats anymore. I mean, yeah, you know, you have the Oakland uh, City Strangler or whatever. Oakland what? County Child Killer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oakland County Child Killer. Yeah, but I think it's the internet. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that's where you go to read your scary trick-or-treating stories. Your creepypasta. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're a creepypasta guy, right, Josh? Yeah, a little bit. Right. I don't keep up with it a whole lot. but Well, you know. explain to the audience what creepypasta is. Well, see, I wish Sydney were here because he could explain it better than I could. But we'll, we'll hit him again. Let's yeah, see, you'll like, hit we'll him. do a comparative okay. story. All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, what I understand, creepypasta started as just like this line on Reddit. You know, the these right. stories that people were telling, but they were treating it like it was a real thing. And it just kind of blew up. It's like really interesting because it's almost like modern folk tales almost. Right. That's where Slender Man comes Slender Man, from. and that's where your, yeah. um, what is it, Marble Hornets. That mm-hmm. is your yeah, quintessential Hornets. creepypasta. Right yeah, there. exactly. Have you been through that? Have you gone through that whole thing? Through what? Marble Hornets. Have you watched it? No. You've never seen anything? No. Oh, oh you got to check that out. Okay, what is that? Um, For those who, like me who don't know. Okay, so Marble Hornets uh, is one of those... Um, transmedia ventures Mm -hmm. to where we have uh this kid who's had a friend and the story goes he had this friend who was making this movie uh his friend ended up disappearing and he got a hold of all these tapes and And the movie was called marble in the movie was called that they were making was called marble hornets okay and so he starts watching these tapes and as he's watching these tapes, mm-hmm. it's just like your your classic like camera. It's dark. He's looking through his yard because he thinks someone's there. And then, in the corner, you see the Slender Man just mm-hmm. like, and then move. And then he freaks out and runs away. You uh-huh. know. And then it just starts getting. I'm getting chills thinking about it because it yeah. gets intense. Okay. Like, yeah. When he first comes across um, Masky, is that what they call him? That sounds right. So is this a series of videos? Yes. Yeah. And they're all probably anywhere from like three to like seven minutes long a piece. It's kind of like Blair Witch, but more watchable because okay. it's in smaller increments. So yeah. it's a YouTube joint? Right. But my main issue with it is, you know, once you get further along into it, I mean, obviously like any, you know, YouTube series that has more than like 10 episodes, the first episode is, you know a ton of hits and then it pretty much kind of just sure digresses yeah, yeah. yeah people don't hang with things very long yeah anymore. No. exactly no they don't exactly so once they get to their peak the quality of the video starts to change okay and they don't really explain why because right. they're showing you found footage mm-hmm. you know and he could have easily been like hey you got a new camera or something like that you know but they don't it just like the quality gets better and you could tell yeah. they got a little bit of like money okay. to, yeah. to, to spend and it now. actually works against them kind of yeah that's the by the, by the end of it yeah um one thing that you can do that that a lot of people have done is they have compiled all of the slender man material uh and then compiled the material of a few of the other mysterious characters that okay. pop up yeah. um so you can just watch like every scene with those characters the slender man stuff specifically right. is re- it is really good it is it's really good no, yeah creepy pasta is a an example of how the internet has given us something instead of taking it away Absolutely. it has given us this community of amateur storytellers for the yeah. most part trying to creep each other out yeah there's a sci-fi version of creepy pasta it's a site where um people are writing catalog entries for artifacts that are being kept by some sort of shadow organization for the mm-hmm. life of me i cannot remember it but they it's like the x-files version of what they're doing on okay. creepy pasta okay. so it's kind of like this is the real pl- project blue book this is yeah like, you know with you know, all the stuff like, unredacted yeah. item a slash seven six artifact was recovered yeah. from abandoned house located you know and right then you, you tell the story through the description of the item you That's know cool. and, and it's like an agent's report you can report you know first agent who touched it uh, hand immediately went into necrosis yeah. and right. rotted to the bone you know blah 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 you do all that stuff so that sort of communal storytelling that like sort of campfire mm-hmm. via the internet is pretty cool but I would say that the 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 holiday of Halloween has been slowly castrated by yeah. parental concerns 
culture. Yeah. And people are just, they get scared of the world too easily now. And part of that is the news. Yeah. The news tries to scare you every day. Yeah. Yep. Next up. Something will kill you yeah. right after sports. Yeah. No, tell me now. Yeah, I know. You right? know, if it will really, and they're like, a certain if, brand if, of lettuce yeah. will poison you. Yes. Or, <laughs> or, uh, or a creepy stalker watching women as they go to bed at night. More at 1230. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, right? You yes. know, after right. you've already gone to bed. Yes. Right, yeah. So, um, it's gone, man. Like, yeah. that is gone. I will hand out candy every year as long as there's kids oh, that yeah. will come up. And uh, I was so bummed last year. It was like kind of like my first Halloween living on my own. Yeah. And, and, no, I, but, and no, I, but, had, no. I had a big bowl of candy and I nobody was Nobody came. Yeah, yeah. nobody same thing came. happens to me. I live in a condo and yeah. mostly with older people. Would you guys want to come over to my house on Halloween? I might. And hand out but, candy? Yeah, absolutely. All right, because... My wife and I were like, we need plans for Halloween. And why not make those the plans? Maybe have a couple people over, scare some kids. Yeah. I'm totally making plans without consulting her. So <laughs> Excellent. I put the um, the disclaimer that it could change, but you know, and then the evening's over early enough that if you guys have, you know, young your young man about town, Matt, if you're your buddies or whatever Saturday night, they got something mm -hmm. going, you can shoot to the party or whatever too and yeah well to, to be honest with you halloween for me has always I mean, especially when i was growing up you know after i turned 21 and there's the bar scene and all that stuff every single year about you know beginning of september we all start putting our heads together what are we going to do for halloween what are uh -huh. we going to be for halloween and we keep talking about it until like Friday, Halloween's so Halloween. on Saturday, <laughs> and then we end up like, oh. And for me, for the past, God, I mean, uh, five years, it's been like, yeah, I'm going to do something, but like nothing ever comes around the pike or, you know, yeah. or whatever. And I just don't really, I just end up, you know, with the oh. hammer horror rolling or something. I'll, yeah. I'll clear it with the wife, man. Maybe we can um, put on a good scary movie, yeah. scare some kids. Have a couple That's of laughs, fun. that yeah. sort of a thing, you know. Because um, God, man, you know, every, what, what happens with me with a lot of holidays is I'm like, I'll figure it out when we get there, right? And then the holiday happens, and I know people are doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, what am I gonna do? The hey, dear Facebook, <laughs> hey, is anybody doing anything right. today? Yeah. Sort of thing, you know. You know I'm a little bit past that yeah. so yeah um Sweet. yeah let's let's you know because there are kids i'd say we got about 40 kids last year that's nice. cool. so i mean it was about a good two hours and then there was like some weird moments where like the adults would trick-or-treat too yeah. like all the kids would come up and then an adult would hold a thing and you're like you're the parent yeah. right and i'm like eat their candy i'm like yeah. eh. what i do is Single piece, right? Yeah. And like, where are the smarties? Yeah, right, yeah. right. I, yeah. I got Eat five pounds for a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, you know, yeah. or you know, or the the dots or something. Yeah, it is kind of weird though, because you don't want to be a jerk. But at the same time, you want to go. What? Wait, what? What are you doing? Yeah, you know, this ask for the candy. Kids. Yeah, you just like give them a really long look deep in their I eyes. I do. Like, yeah. thank you. I am judging you. Yeah. I, yeah. I am, yeah. Is this really where you want your life to go Super right now? Super weird thing. All right. Well, uh, before you switch, I yeah. wanted to talk a little bit about something you mentioned, which about okay. the whole we're we're totally scared now. We're frightened all the time. Okay. Because I was almost I was kind of going on the other path that we're kind of jaded now, and we don't we don't have room for whimsy and myth and sanctioned scares. But I think there's a lot to be said for what you're the point you're bringing up as well. I, you know, but I see what you're saying too, especially last year was labeled the year of outrage by slate.com. Mm -hmm. And basically the amount of outrage that was voiced through social media had reached a peak. And I remember last year scrolling through my newsfeed thinking, you know what, what, what is up with people? All yeah. I'm seeing is all this yelling about stuff, you know, where's the positive fun stuff, yeah. you know? And it turns out that, like, last year was this really weird thing where social media got to a point where there's so many users 
and uh, all this outrage yeah. was happening. And uh, I think that there has been some kind of weird loss of sense of humor. Yeah. You know, amongst the the populace. Yeah. Uh, and you know, go ahead. I was gonna say, and and the rise of irony and the, and hipsterism, where you can't just like <laughs> something. Like I can't wear a fedora and legitimately like it. I have to like because like, oh, I'm being retro or some crap like that. And uh -huh. that that goes against who I am. If I like something, I'd like something. God forbid you pick a cape. I know, right? You know, start wearing a cape. First of all, you'll be my hero. <laughs> you know, like one of them opera capes. Yeah. You know, kind of. Thing. I'm gonna bring it back. You, you're the guy. The cape, right? I so one that looks like Doctor. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a different time. It is. It's a different time, and Halloween is um, just uh, it's. I don't go with it with the enthusiasm that I, that I used to because I'm caught up in life and I'm always working and I'm busy. But it's kind of my favorite holiday. It is mine, and. Like, and I don't want to be that old man, like, who's good today or whatever, but I do feel like um, kids today are missing out on something. Yeah, take really it fun. back. Yeah, that's post, right. Post-millennials. Yeah, right. take, back take this Halloween. back, man. And not ironically, genuinely. No, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm done with the irony, too, man. Hey. You know. It's played out. So, um, <laughs> what was I going to shift us to? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was, um, to genuine scares. What is the scariest movie you've seen in the last year? Oh, man. Because I think horror films, too. You're talking about Jaded? Yeah. Oh, my God. It takes so much for a horror film to actually be effective with me. Yeah, yeah. I'm racking my you brain know, I right just look now. at my yeah. checking account if I want to be scared. <laughs> I know, right? Well, I'm now. thinking of, like, overall, like, scary scenario. Like, the like I'm scared for this person in this situation right. because yeah. this is going on. I, like Halloween, like the yes. original Halloween. Right. Yes. And You're that, terrified right. for her. And that wasn't a cheap scare, but so many, you know, filmmakers after that film took the cues from the jumps in that movie mm -hmm. and just I mean, yeah. all your horror now basically is either let's gross them out or let's throw in as many heavy bass drop, high snare uh, jump scares, yeah, you know. Right. Yeah, the you cat know? jumping out of the right, Madison exactly, cabinet. man. If I watch a, a horror movie and they're and newer ones, especially, and they keep doing that shit, it pisses me off. Yeah. I'm right. getting mad because yeah, I'm jumping, but I'm like, damn it, this you're scaring me for no reason at all. Yeah. Scare me because you know, make us jump because something legitimately scary as shit is going mm -hmm. on. Yeah, you know? I don't yeah. want just the cheap ass shit. Yeah, right. For me, when a film. Uh, makes me so fearful for what's happening to the character that I can take on their emotions because you get into mm -hmm. the, oh my God, if I was in that situation, what yeah. would I do? Totally. Yeah. Uh, did either of you catch It Follows? I have not seen that yet. I want no, okay. I haven't seen it This is either. my hearty recommendation for It Follows. Uh, one of the cool things is it was shot in Detroit, which I didn't know going in, but I quickly recognized the general neighborhoods. Yeah. Uh, the the idea is that, and the best part is, is they don't explain what this entity is Good. or why it does what it does. Good. But essentially, it is a, a entity that will hunt you down and murder you. And the way it marks you and knows you as a target is that it's passed, that curse is passed on to you by having sex with someone. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Yeah, so it's... It's horrifying. It's an STD right. curse. Yeah. Right, and it an starts STC. with... STC. <laughs> it starts with a guy hooking up with a girl, and then he ties her to a chair in a parking structure and says, I'm sorry, but I had to get rid of it. Uh, okay. And he runs. And the thing about the entity is it can look like anybody at any time. Mm -hmm. It changes forms, okay? And the thing is, is once it kills that person, it goes to the person that was next in the chain back. Okay. So just when one person in the movie thinks they've lost it, they get the curse again. They can. Uh, okay? They can. And um, it is a indie film. The production quality is at the perfect level for it. And some of the actors that they used to... Um, and the entity only walks. It walks. Right. Like okay? Michael Myers. So here's the he thing. just walks. You can, like... Say you catch it in New York. And you get on a plane and you fly to L.A. Mm -hmm. You're safe for as long as it takes someone to walk to L.A. Oh, okay. So it LA. walks a normal speed. So yeah. you've got like a month oh, or yeah. two. Right. You can never settle. 
You are never yeah. safe. Okay, all right. Can, yes. can you like go go over to Europe or something? Can it walk under the ocean? I don't know. Ooh. They didn't establish that rule. Mm. But that's maybe, coming. That's coming. Maybe it gets on a plane or a boat or <laughs> something, right? Still it, following. It is. It is has one imperative, and that is to go to its target, yeah. right? And it can't be killed. It, it can't be killed. Okay, it, so it makes me oh think. My God. Uh, I don't know why. It, it, it makes me think of Yul Brynner and Westworld. Yeah, you know? which, by the way, is going to be HBO joint next yeah, year, yeah. and I'm super stoked. Anyway, really clever ending, and, uh, you know, I won't explain anything, but one of the things that was really effective to me is that uh, all the characters are young. They are high school to early college, right? And, you know, for a lot of people, you know, their sex is, you know... Um, there's so much that goes on in your head when you're first yeah. developing a sexual life. Right. You know, and there's a lot of things that happen depending on who you choose <clears throat> to have sex with. Bad things, good things, mm-hmm. scary things, all that. And for me, when I was in college, AIDS really became a, a serious, serious, frightening thing. Yeah. And um, everyone, like, freaked out. And it really kind of ruined having sex with people. You know, because of all the precautions and all that. And now it seems like the world has it's, forgotten it's there's like, such a yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. It's you know? weird. But uh, our generation was like on red alert when it came to yeah. came to that. I need and, you to fill out this dating history and triplicate. Yeah, right. right. Dental right. dams. Yeah, I know. Right? And like, you know, all kinds of things. So yeah. um, it follows, plugs into the kind of fears that are surrounded by when you're first having sex and the kind of repercussions, you know, from catching a, yeah. an STD so to wait, getting pregnant do they to show, what people will think of you. Right. Do to, they show people having sex? Um, well, you know, as much as an R-rated movie might. Yes. You know, so, you <laughs> I know. I don't know, like after a minute of that, I'm kind of like, let's get back to the yeah. story, people. I don't need to see something. Um, and what crying. the entity does to people when it catches them is, is horrific. It will turn you into a pretzel. Oh. It'll bend you and break you and crush you around. And mm. honest to God, best horror film I've seen in the last year. What? Really, just and the the tone. <sighs> I've, Good stuff. I've heard a lot about about. I've heard a lot about it. Follows and the Babadook. The Babadook yeah. is good. Babadook, solid stuff. I that's on know, Netflix. Yes. Yeah. I don't know that it necessarily scared me, but I completely got lost in the story. Would you say unsettling? Yes, I would say is unsettling. That is yeah. a good word for it. And like a great story, there's a very big theme that's actually at work there. Yes, it has that, a, an actual premise. <laughs> yes, there, there's there's something that it's really talking about. It's not just there to... To kill everyone. It's not a slasher, right. more yeah. or less. There is a pretty heavy-duty message yeah. that's actually in the film, hmm. The yeah. Babadook. And... Um, the Duke. <laughs> yes. Um, very good. And uh, you can, when you break it down, it might not even really be a horror film mm-hmm. at the end of the day, but is psychologically interesting. Yeah. Pretty powerful. So it's like it's like creepy unsettling, not yeah. human centipede unsettling. No. Correct. No, it's not body horror. Okay. Yeah. And body it also horror. kind of addresses some of the horrors that exist in the real world. Yeah. You know, that happen in people's lives. Yeah. Interesting. And, and, uh, and the horror of being a parent sometimes, which is yes. one of the great things about horror is that it can allow us to explore these things that are not socially permissible. Like, right. You're not, like, I'm sure there are people who are cringing when I said the, the horror of parenthood. No. Parenthood's supposed to be this happy, magical time. And for I hope for anybody who's listening, if your parents are going to be, I hope that's true for you. But there's a lot of fear in there. Oh, yeah. The, the child in this film, for the first half of it, you want to t- put him in a bag and throw him off a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he is a nightmare child. Yeah. Okay. Behaviorally, he has psychological issues. Um, and you feel so... He's wearing his mother down. And she doesn't have anything left. Yeah. And then the film turns in a big way and suddenly mm-hmm. you feel different about everything yeah wow. and that's all i will say okay yeah. interesting yeah. you guys yes. have sold me on both of those yeah. films i'm gonna definitely have oh to. it follows mm-hmm. yeah is it follows on netflix i don't i don't think I so think it's, it's and then uh is under the under the skin 
on Netflix right now? I don't know. Under the Skin is a movie that Scarlett Johansson did oh, last yeah. year. Uh, that's based on a, was it a Scottish sci-fi novel? I think like so. That? It's weird unsettling. Yeah. Okay. Um, it uses a lot of atonal music, mm. and it u- has a lot of scenes where there's no dialogue at all. And cinematically, it is super artistic. Um, I will not watch that film again, hmm. but I'm very glad that I saw it. Okay. And it reminds you of Halloween? It just reminds me of being scared. Okay. It, it is something that you feel very disturbed. Yeah. It, right. it hung with me for days. It hung with me for days. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, it, the way it was filmed was very interesting. They did a lot of cinema verite, which means they basically went out in the street and used non-actors and did in-the-moment mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's really good. So um, we are coming close to the end, Matt. So what is one other thing that we should talk about this yeah. episode? Well, I mean, you know, this is a generally a comic-centric, uh, comic book-centric podcast, and what would we be if we didn't uh you know share a few of our favorite uh halloween uh uh themed moments in comic books uh, whether it was an entire story that happened on halloween characters that like moon knight yeah. that uh you know are 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 go to uh costumes for most really smart kids at 9 years old <laughs> yeah yeah seriously man yeah. uh but i, I just I love I, that i have a couple uh that came to mind uh First and foremost, as, as comic book fans, uh, Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's uh, Long Halloween, obviously. Oh, yeah. But that kind of takes place over the course of like an entire year. Well, it's all the holidays. Yeah, right, it's right, all right. Holidays. right. Whereas, whereas their first uh, endeavor, uh, Haunted Night, is more... Like a collection of... It's almost vignettes. Yeah, it's a bunch yeah. of vignettes that, that are, are Halloween-themed. I think that there's one with a Mad Hatter in there, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Um, which was really cool. Uh, another one that you know brings Halloween to mind is Lock and Key. Oh yeah, uh, um, that that series. I've, I I haven't read the entire series, um, but I've read about the first quarter of it. And you know, as far as a a horror comic goes, mm-hmm. uh, it's that that right there uh, really bring makes me think of like you know the the Halloween season due to the mm-hmm. subject matter. Mm-hmm. And whatnot, um, and then also to uh, you know, classic tales from the crypt, creepy, absolutely oh, yeah. Yeah. creepy, yeah. eerie. Yeah, yeah. Eerie. eerie was a Marvel magazine, was I, it? You know, I, I don't well, creepy was one, maybe, and yeah, eerie was the was. other, right? right. Yeah. Creepy, mm-hmm. and then Bernie Wrightson, he was he did stuff for eerie, I think. Right. Yeah, I did. that was real notable. Well, you know, I told you about that box of silver. It was creepy. It's creepy. The mm-hmm. box of silver age stuff I inherited from my uncles when I was a kid. Right. There was a good portion of that were old horror comics. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't know if those were tales from the crypt or some kind of knockoffs or yeah. things that titles that I don't even know. But there um, were a ton of them. Right. Yeah. I had lots of that, you know, and they always had that horrible twist at the end, uh-huh. you know, and uh, I love those. Right. I love those. I recently was at the library and they had like five hardbound covers, uh, collections of Creepy, mm-hmm. you know. Dark took, Horse has been putting Yeah, those out. I took mm-hmm. those out and, um, you know, all that stuff, um, you know, brought on the comics code. Yeah. That was the stuff that... People uh, like uh, Wertham. Frederick Wertham, yeah. Yeah, Wertham, The yeah. Seduction of the Innocent. He wrote yeah. the book in the 50s that basically said that comics are are destroying children yeah. and that Batman is gay and yeah. on right. and on and on. Superman's a Nazi fascist. Yes. Right. Yeah. And uh, the, that gave birth to Mad Magazine. Yeah, it did. Because um, William Gaines? William Gaines, yeah. Yeah, William H. Was it William H. Gaines? It was uh, the son. It wasn't okay. the father. Because the father, when he started the... Uh, EC Comics. It was used. It was education comics right. with Bible stuff. And yeah. Then the Sun took and over and made it entertaining comics. War comics, horror comics, oh, love comics, yeah. and all that. He had to go to Congress and sit at a table yeah. and be grilled as to why his comics were good or bad for yeah. society. And he really screwed it up. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. He did not do well. And what ended up happening is a lot of those titles went away. The Comics Code came into play, but. We get Mad Magazine, right? Yeah. yeah. So, 
in a way, I think it really worked out. Oh, you know? absolutely. I mean, absolutely. But uh, those, those old Silver Age horror comics are, yeah. you know, now that's a great Halloween night. Oh, for oh, sure. Sell yeah, a stack yeah. of those. And yeah, and it's and it really, it's not even like their, their uh, freak shows or anything, but they're just classic, you know, creepy tales to where, sure. you know, when you get to that last page... You're gonna be running up on a body, well, or you know, right, yeah. something. Well, how about Creep yeah. Show, man? Oh, Creep Show yeah. was a film that captured those comics. Oh, absolutely, beautifully. Yeah, it was an know? homage. Yeah, the... completely. Yep. I remember going to see that at the theater and being like, "Yes, uh-huh. this is the best." You know, now this is how you can adapt a comic. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I, lo- I love how they shift from scene to scene, like panel to panel. Yeah. Yes, you know. It's... Yeah, absolutely. And when Ted the Danson game. and the woman they got their heads yeah. buried. Oh God! You know uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, did that... Leslie Nielsen. Did you guys Nielsen catch there. Scream Queens last week? No. no. Okay. That's not Adam Eve. Adam Eve is the star of Scream. Yes. Scream yes, Queen. yes. 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 And. Um, um, uh, Scream Queens, they did, like, the Fox thing now is to do two episodes, you know, so it's episode one, episode two, but they did it as a two-hour block, okay. and there's, um, for someone who really knows the horror movie genre, they're gonna see a lot of references, okay. but there was one part where the sorority, a sorority is being uh, slowly destroyed by a killer who okay. dresses in a devil costume and kills them in horrific Friday the 13th kind of ways. Okay. Anyway... Uh, one night for hazing, the sorority sisters are buried to the head um, on the lawn in front of the sorority that. house. They pull out the lawnmower? Yes! Yeah. And he mows one of them. Yeah. Solid. Okay? Yeah. And that reminded me of Creep Show. That reminded me of Motel Hell. Motel Hell. That's what you know, I thought of And uh, uh, I have really high hopes for Ryan Murphy and... Uh, and uh, the, his latest joint. Cause huh, he's I'll doing, have to check that out. He's doing American Horror Story and honestly, it's better. Right out of the gate, I'm like, this is a better program than American Horror Story. I've had I've had my my qualms with AHS. I, um, I only watched the first season, and I was kind of like, you know, the maid's hot, but oh, she was. <laughs> I've wow, only, I've only watched the, wow. I've only watched the commercials. Yeah. I've, never, right. I've yeah. never watched. Okay, the, the story is kind of disjointed. Yeah, um, it's also like a chocolate cake. With fudge, frosting, yes. pudding, oh, hot God. fudge, yeah. whipped cream, sparklers, sprinkles, yeah. and balloons. Yeah. Uh, like they just throw uh, everything, everything at it, and um, and it's all sweet, no protein. They give you no one. <laughs> yes, because they they lack the ability to give you a character to root for. Yeah, because everybody's screwed up and horrific. Yeah, right. so you don't have at least a neutral character. To take you through yeah. that environment, and and I would say that if it were like a single show, like or a movie, that wouldn't be quite so bad. Because I mean, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror and all of them were predicated yeah. on these are really scummy people, and they're getting what they yes. deserve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So stretch that over an entire season, you just you just drown in the, right. the human waste. Yeah. Interesting. So, drowning in human waste is that how we're going to end our show? Well, I wanted to add in a, a few records. Yes, please do. Sure. So, um, you took a lot of the classic ones, but I'm sorry. That's fine. There was and this would be really hard to find, but it's one of my favorite uh, Vertigo miniseries. It was called Blood and Shadows, and it was written by one of my favorite writers, Joe R. Lansdale, mm-hmm. and it's uh, about his character called the Dark, uh, the God of the Razor, which showed up originally in his book, The Night Runners. And it's uh, it's really interesting. The God of the Razor, he's like this Jack the Ripper looking dude, but he's immortal and you know he's, he's, he's really neat. And it's it's this time and space spanning story that goes from the old west to the future. When and when did this come out? Man? It was late nineties, early two thousands. Okay. Um, it was in four volumes. I don't know if it was ever collected, but if it was. And you can find it. I think it's it's really good. What's it called again? Uh, Blood and Shadows. Blood and Shadows. Yeah. And that's Lansdale. Yeah, Joe R. Lansdale. I forget who drew drew it now. Um, and also for like modern stuff, you can't go wrong with Archie Horror. You yeah. Know? Afterlife with Archie, Archie has been killing it. It has. They have absolutely been killing it. Afterlife with Archie. Uh, the th- uh, was it Thrilling Tales of Sabrina? Or Chilling Tales of Sabrina. They're really good. You know what I like about it is they're like, hell, let's just go for it. Yeah. They, like, yeah. Archie's been around for a million, billion years. Let's just let's, let's just, just stir up the pot. Yeah, man. And 
there, it, it's awesome. It is. It really is. And like it, you have this look of doubt on your face. Like you do. No. No. Get it from the library. Get it from the library. I got Archie uh, after li- after Life with Archie from the library, and it's good, man. It is. It's really good. good. And I, it's kind of classic horror. Like, yeah. uh, sorry, I'm not going to extend this too much, but one of the things that. Because I was trying to think of a movie, recent movie that I'd seen that I'd liked. And, like, a lot of scary movies, like, I enjoy them, and then I get to the end, and then I'm just angry. Because it's, like, a really stupid cop-out ending, like the end of Oculus or the end of Sinister. Right. And I'm like, no, no, give me something, you know? Yeah, <laughs> don't, seriously. Don't just, this is the lazy way out. And um, the, uh, the Afterlife with Archie and Sabrina are good stories in and of themselves and they're also good horror stories they have the mm-hmm. core uh uh strong characters a, a, a premise and it's just how's their superhero cool. stuff i have not had a chance because i know they that. got a little bit of superhero stuff yeah. going on too do they really yeah, yeah. they do man yeah, but... and, and it's like it's total not dark horse to comic dark horse is in the concept of yes. coming out of like the last place you would think yeah um they're, yeah, they, they launched some superhero titles recently, mm-hmm. and they're just operating on their own frequency, man. Yeah. And it's really cool to see. I mean, they're kind I mean of how much rock. could you do? Yeah, it is pretty punk rock. I mean, yeah. what do you do with Archie? I know, after right? I don't know. years, you know, what do you do? Yeah. Or was it Riverdale or yeah, whatever? Riverdale. I mean, what do you do in Riverdale? Zombies. Yeah. All right, well, real quick, uh, yeah. on that note, uh, to wrap things Zombies. up, I'll ask you, Josh, first, Betty or Veronica? Oh, I, I'm a Veronica. Yeah? I'm a Veronica, too, man. I uh, went co- Brunettes, man. I know, that's, yeah. Brunettes, dark, the dark-haired ones. Yeah. Are you a Betty? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> he wants to take her back to Ma. Yeah. I'm hey, right. No shame, man. No, yeah, shame. no shame in that. Tom and I will fight it over Veronica. Tom will probably win. He's no, well, tattoos. I'm married. I can't <laughs> fight over any women. Well, I don't know. You right. could be like Henry Miller and Henry and June Miller. <laughs> right? Anias Nin. Yeah, she could be your Anias Nin. Right? So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Ver- I, I say Betty for uh, Friday night and Veronica for Saturday yeah. night. Right. I think yeah. Or Betty for the afternoon and Veronica yeah. for the evening. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Betty's probably a lot more low maintenance than Veronica. I have no doubt that Veronica is a big pain in the ass. Yeah. Right. Yeah, more Rar. likely. <laughs> uh-huh. So you maybe make, well, the heart wants what it wants. Right. All right, well, well, this is going to uh, end up the uh, the first of our uh, October uh, Halloween-themed uh, episodes. We've talked a little bit about Archie here to close. It looks like I'm going to have to read... Uh, a little bit of Archie Afterlife, as well as uh, take a look at uh, films like It Follows, Under the Skin, and uh, The Babadook as yes. well. Yeah. So, folks, you know, uh, you ought to do the same thing. But first, Monster Squad. Oh, oh yeah. Monster Squad. Yeah. yeah I mean, I keep looking watch over. Monster <laughs> Squad. We're watching Monster Squad on yeah. mute the whole time we're recording this. And yes! Yeah. I know. Rudy. Right. Rudy, who is right. like 1950s cool. Kids yeah. Incorporated. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, he could have hang out with the Frog Brothers oh, yeah. from Lost Boys, and we didn't even get to that. Yeah. We got to talk Lost Boys oh, in, this <sighs> month. We got to talk Lost <sighs> Boys. So much I'm more to guy. cover. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Sorry. That's yeah. so, no, it's all right, man. So, we yeah. There's so much that we still have to cover. So folks, please stick with us. Um, go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Maddie's Podcast. You can follow Tom at Read Tom Lucas. You can follow myself at underscore Matt D Simone. Josh. At Joshua Begley one. Hop on Twitter, man. Yeah, hop on Twitter. I am, yeah. Hit up either no, Josh. I mean hop on and follow Josh. Yeah, exactly, Twitter, yeah. Right. For sure, for sure. Uh you know, buy some books from Tom, read Tom. God, we didn't even talk about uh, your past weekend, man. Yeah, no, but um later on this month we could do a double recap because I'm doing Necromonicon 2015 in Tampa. The second weekend in October. Cool. And that's a okay. horror and other genre con as well. So maybe we can do a big sort of con recap. And also I can talk about a little bit about uh, Bizarro Con, Absolutely, which is yeah. in early November. And I'm really, really psyched to go out there. But for those of you listening, if you've not bought Pax Titanus and you're really thinking about it, please, by before the end of October. And that's all I got to say. Excellent. Well... 
For uh, Dr. Tom, Dr. Josh, and myself, this has been uh, the dreaded episode 13. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> of Maddie Loves Podcast. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Oh, my scary laugh went to a genuine laugh. Maddie Loves Podcast. Maddie Loves Podcast. <laughs>